Hello everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday the 14th of January. Our topic today is Imagineering Your Classroom. Our special guest is Dr. Hallie de Blasi. Your show hosts are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffat, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. Thanks to Tammy for doing the closed captioning. Paula will introduce Howie next. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live. Um, it is my great pleasure to do the introductions today. I've had the pleasure of knowing Howie DeBlasi since we first met, I believe it was at the ISTE conference in 2009. I have attended many of his PD sessions at ISTE over the years, and also at the TCEA Area 7 Regional Conference in White Oak, Texas, and at Ed Camp Magic in Orlando. <clears throat> Howie loves all things Disney, and his enthusiasm is contagious, as you will experience today. Dr. Howie DeBlasi is a, is a published author, a change agent, an educational technology consultant, and the producer of the Did You Know YouTube series, versions 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. He was recognized by the Center for Interactive Learning and Collaboration with the Pinnacle Award for Outstanding Professional Development Programs and, at, and by ISTE as the best of the best for outstanding professional development programs for 2011, 2012, 2013, and 2014. Dr. DeBlasi has extensive experience in the educational field. He has 20 years. He's been a business leader for 10 years and a CIO for 14 years. His emphasis is on digital technology, multimedia, interactive video conferencing, and 21st century learning. He has presented to thousands of educational leaders, administrators, and teachers from Bangkok to Boston. Howie has served as a member of the ISTE Board of Directors from 2010 to 2013. He's been a state board member to Cal 8, which is the Colorado Association of Leaders in Ed Tech. He's been the president of the ISTE Special Interest Group, Interactive Video Conferencing, and has served as a member of the Allen November Consulting Team. It is with great pleasure that I introduce my dear friend, Dr. Howie DeBlasi. Welcome, Howie. And I have a newbie question for you to get us started. Howard Disney and Imagineering connected and how does this relate to our classroom learning environment? So it's all yours. Thanks, Paula, for that really great introduction. Appreciate it. Uh, I am so impressed with the audience, literally from around the world, and especially that 59% of the people have been to a Disney park. So we're going to show you how to tie some of those things in. And 45% um, that are using the resources. So we'll show you another 55% of what you can use. But to answer your question, um, a lot of people have heard the term Imagineering, but they really don't understand. And it was something that Walt Disney came up with many, many years ago. And it's a combination of engineering and imagination. But it really pulls more into that. And Walt did design thinking way back in the 40s and the 50s. And it's combining critical thinking and problem solving, creativity, uh, putting all those pieces together. And so that's what I'm going to share with you today as we go through and show you some of those uh, resources that are available. And uh, as if you've been to one of my sessions or workshops, you know it's the fire hose approach. There are lots of things that we will go over as far as resources today. Uh, it said there were 12 projects. There's actually 21 that are in here. And I will give you lots of resources. And you can download this PowerPoint with actually 140 slides that have um, a lot more resources on it at drhowie.com. And we'll review that uh, at the end as we go through that. So we're going to show you some of these things that are in here. Uh, the contact information, they're all listed here. 
They're on the resources uh, in the uh, live binder for you, and they're also on my website, drhowie.com. But the easiest way to get a hold of me is to actually just send an email to howie at frontier.net and say, I need the such and such and fill in the blank. I need your Twitter handle. Um, as we go through this, a lot of these I don't have really the time in the 50 minutes or so that we have to spend the detail, but you can download them off of the Dr. Howie website and you can look at all those slides, see the resources, the live links are in there on each one of those. One of the things that we do, the Disney portion, uh, Ryan Beckman and myself do a podcast twice a month and it's basically how to integrate Disney into your classroom. We talk about different ideas. We have a guest once a month, and then Ryan and I usually talk about specific things that we have done in the classroom or suggestions and ideas for you to do that. It's available on Libsyn, or you can go to iTunes and subscribe on that. We'd love to have you download. There's uh, about a year and a half worth of podcasts that you can actually take a listen to on that. One of the things that we're announcing today, we actually opened a couple days ago, is a PD Magic graduate education class is being done through Buena Vista University. So if anybody's interested, uh, you can go to the My Disney Class website, mydisneyclass.com. You can sign up for that. It is very inexpensive considering that most graduate classes for one semester hour are in the two to three hundred dollar price range. This for a three credit hour of professional development that you can use towards salary advancement, certification, and so on is about three hundred dollars. So it's a great price. Three of us will be doing this class. It'll be offered in May. It's an online class, very easy to do, very easy to subscribe and register. So please take advantage of that if you'd like to. And again, you can send me an email at howie at frontier.net if you want, want more information. I have to thank all of these people that have helped me over the last year putting all these things together. And I've referenced each one of these in here, so a big, I don't have time to acknowledge all of those. But I'm going to quickly start on these and go through them so you can see what some of these things are. Some are very easy. Uh, Jennifer sent this to me and they're just classroom ideas that you can do that she has put together that you can take and integrate very, very simply. A lot of the things that Jennifer has, and I'll try to reference this as we go through this for the grade level. Some of these apply to a lot of grade levels. So these are probably K-5. Uh, that Jennifer has in here on each one of these that she can do. But one of the things that's in there are some mobile apps that she has. And the one, I have a three-year-old grandson, a seven-year-old, and a couple others that are a little older than that. And they love the Mickey's Magical Math World. And it's got all the things dealing with counting and addition, subtraction, sorting, problem solving, and so on. And it's a great way. It's a both available uh, as an app on the iPhone and Android. And uh, what I really like about it is whatever the interest is, if they're interested in princesses, that's available. If they're interested in movies, that's available as far as the math apps. There's a whole Marvel app piece that's in there also. So any one of those, you can uh, put that together. Another one, again, this is uh, elementary, and it's called the Disney Family. And what you can do on this is there's coloring pages that you can download that are free that are put up on there. And whatever the topic happens to be, if there's a holiday that you want to do, if you want to travel to Disney World, Disneyland, Disneyland Paris, any of those places, you can actually download those printables and actually print them. Uh, you can do storytelling in this. And I'm a big advocate of storytelling, which Walt Disney was also. There's always a story behind the attraction when they put those together by the Imagineers. And here's an example of a couple, and you can uh, write a little story depending on the grade level that are on there. Uh, this one is something that uh, Ryan and I are working on a book um, that is going to have something to do with Disney parks, Magic Kingdom specifically. We'll be doing four books uh, to be published, uh, looks like right now, probably next June or July. But it's interesting because on a podcast we talked about this of taking a trip to Disney World. And the idea is to do a real world application, problem solving, project based learning, inquiry based, whatever you want to call it. But what it lets you do is you use a search engine, you go through and you find out what's the best time to go, what's the temperature, how am I going to get there, how far is it from my house, and you use Google Maps, you use a lot of different applications to put all those things together. This can be done 
in uh, two class periods, and this really works with kids of all ages, uh, all the way up through high school. So I would say even from first grade on up, being able to do that, or you can have discussions with uh, kindergartens if you want to. So we talked about that on our podcast, and what I was just flabbergasted about is a little while after that, this shows up on teacher, teacher pay teachers. And somebody has taken, and by the way, uh, they're being contacted about, um, I don't know if I should say plagiarizing, but borrowing many of my ideas and modifying them a little bit. And uh, this individual has taken what is in there, and now they're selling it for $5. So um, I was kind of a taken aback on it, but um, I just wanted to point that out. You might want, if you're doing some uh, uh, topics and things, you might want to go to Teachers Pay Teachers. And I do buy some things from there, but uh, I was just uh, a little upset when I saw that particular piece. Disney Worldwide Publishing has a lot of things that are available. And by the way, the links on all these that uh, uh, Peggy has put in the live binders. And when you do the PowerPoint, anything like in here where you that's a hot, hot link, you click on that, it'll take you directly to that. These are aimed at six to eight years old, kindergarten to about second grade, maybe third grade, uh, possibly up into fourth. But a lot of things on the publishing that they have. And what's interesting is, and I'm going to ask uh, Peggy or one of the other moderators, if they have ever heard of this book, I really like Slop. Peggy, have you heard of that, or Paul, or any one of the other moderators? I have not read, read this that book? book, but when I saw it in the links, I watched the video, and I was so motivated by it, I want to read it now. It is a great book, um, and, and if you're not familiar with this, this is a, an example of the way that Disney works, and Disney fanatics, which I would include myself in that, um, actually have a great way to do it, and there's a little uh, video there that goes along with that. So Peggy, I appreciate uh, your comments. This is probably one of my favorite activities that's done, and I can apply it because uh, my grandson, and I'll tell you about that in just a second, and it's called an Inside Out Writing Activities, and if you have not seen the Inside Out movie, it has to do with emotions. Um, I was really concerned when I took the six-year-old to see the movie, would he really understand this? Because it was um, a, a little intellectual as far as some of the concepts that are being pr uh, presented. And what this activity actually allows you to do is a writing exercise that you go through that. There's a series of posters that you can get that are free that you can download. Um, and what she does uh, is she takes and puts the different books and things about emotions from the library, goes down and get those. You can see how they can color and do for th different things and talk about when you're being happy and so on. And I asked my grandson after the movie, um, which was the one character or the emotion that really impacted him the most? And I was just really shocked. He said sadness. And I said, why? And he says, because when you're sad, and then he explained to me why sometimes you feel sad and things, and he got the whole thing. I was so impressed that he really understood that. And then we have the Disney Infinity game, and that's one of the characters that it actually plays with. So it's a little writing exercise that you can do, the conversation that you can have. Pretty powerful stuff when kids start talking about emotions. And these are some, uh, the link is here for the free posters that you can get. And there's a Facebook group specifically on this, and the hot link is right there that you can actually take that and go to that to uh, pull that particular piece up. Um, craft activities, uh, this is probably mostly elementary school, but I have seen it done in the middle school. And this comes from a website called family.disney.com. It is not an official site. In fact, many of the things that uh, the sometimes called Disney geeks, Disney fanatics, Disney supporters, um, there is kind of an unwritten rule that um, you can't use Disney directly with their name. Now that's changed in the last few years. By that I mean what has happened is that um, it allows you to use Disney as long as it's in a positive way. So example, our website is called My Disney Class. Our podcast is called My Disney Class Podcast. Disney fully supports that because of the Disney community that's out there. And so uh, even though you have the word Disney in it now, about five years ago it wasn't that way. 
So it's necessary to actually use that in there. It's okay. Disney allows you to actually do that. Um, the craft piece that's in here, uh, these are some more things. Here's one on football that's available and some drawing and color things that you can actually put in there. And using the Disney method in teaching is another one that's on here. And what I want to point out is Dean has actually put this piece together um, for the method. Now, I don't have the time to actually do all of this. What I want to do, though, is share some of the things that Robert Diltz wrote a number of years ago. It's called Strategies of Genius. And it was a book about the Walt Disney process and how Disney had the roles. Now, there's three that are in the book, and I, this really ties into the classroom, probably more at uh, fifth, sixth grade up through twelfth grade. And one of the things that you can find out here as we go through this, it was published actually in 1995, and Diltz talked about these three things. The people that are out there in Walt's community were the dreamer, the realist, and the critic. And then what's happened over the last few years is there's another concept that's been added to this. And what Disney did is he used all of these to solve their problems to, on the animation, on the parks, when they designed all those things. And I want to show you how this can actually apply in the classroom. And I'd like you to kind of, as we go through, and say, I'm that person. There are actually four of them. The first one is the person that kind of stands on the outside and takes a spectator view and says, oh, this is looking what it's like from the outside. Here's the facts. Here's the data. Here's what I need the information to solve this particular problem. So see if you're that person. Or maybe you're the dreamer. Maybe you have the idea that anything is possible. If you can dream it, you can do it was a, a saying that supposedly Walt Disney said and is a challenge to people out there. Walt Disney actually did not say that, even though it's contributed to him and has been for years. There was actually another individual. So if you'd like to have some fun with your kids, a project you could do is say, who said that statement? If you can dream it, you can do it. It was not Walt Disney, even though it's attributed to him. But feeling that anything is possible. What's the ideal? What can I figure out and come up with with new ideas? What do we hope would happen on this particular one? The realist, I think that's uh, probably understandable. Most of us know what that is, but we use the cognitive knowledge and skill to say, look, get a life. This is what it's like. And what we have to do is organize these things and say, that's been done before, but maybe we could look at it in a little different way and sift through those ideas and come up with the facts that are available. And then the last one is the critic. These individuals take a look at the risk and the dangers about if you did this, this might happen. But maybe we could take the plan and come up with each one of those things. And what's interesting is, is the links that I have in here is how you can actually use that in the classroom to come up with a solution. In other words, here's the problem. Divide your kids into four different groups and have each one of them take on one of those roles. And what's interesting when you have a lot of fun to do that is you can say, even though you're a dreamer, let's put you over in the realist group so they can hear that. So it's a different way that you can actually apply that. Now the next uh, slide that I'm going to be showing here are the ones that have something to do with um, creativity, problem solving, and so on. And this is one that, again, it's not a Disney site. And most of these things I'm showing you are not Disney sites. I don't think I have except one in here, an official Disney site. But what's available here is a coaster simulation design. And it's called uh, The Science of, Dis of Disney Imagineering. And what it actually, through a flash program, allows you to go through and select a coaster design. They talk about what an Imagineer is. So all this classroom material could be used in there and how they work at Disney. Um, then storytelling, as I mentioned before, is a big part of Walt Disney, Walt Disney World and the parks. There's always a story and a theme behind each one of those in the attraction. So what you do is you select the story. And then what you actually do is you get all of these parts that you see down here at the bottom. And what kids have the most fun with is they do crazy things at the beginning. So I always do this when I do it. And I do a lot of workshops around the country and also work with a lot of school districts. We give everybody five minutes just to let the coaster fly off 
the track. And you can make it actually do that, but the idea is to design something that has enough gravity and inertia that it will go through, ties the size in the physics piece, the math piece, you can put all those pieces together on it. Another one that, again, is not an uh, official Disney site, but I have a lot of fun in the workshops that we do, and we did one uh, last year in Orlando called at the Brain Conference. We had uh, about 80 superintendents, principals, curriculum directors that were in there in leadership roles and some technology directors. And we did a particular class in designing a theme park attraction, and they told me that this was one of the most fun things they did, was to actually look at Disney and take a look and do research on Google research and patents, and there's links in here, and see what they've made. Like the first one, uh, apparatus and method for creating optical illusion effects, drinking fountain with sound effects. All of these are different ones that are available, and what you actually do is if you go to Google patent research, you get all the details, but the fun part to me is the one in the upper right-hand corner, this one right here, that is actually the flying saucer that was an attraction that only lasted about a year at Disneyland back in the late 50s, and it didn't work real well. The one to the left is a new patent that came out about a year and a half ago that you will see in the Animal Kingdom in the new Avatar Land, and there's a simulator that will be in there when you ride that. Here's the actual website on Google Patents. You could spend a whole week on here, but you can tie in the math in here if you want. You could tie in the social studies piece, the research, all of the things uh, that are available for that in project-based learning, inquiry-based learning also. And this one is a fun one. I don't know if anybody uh, knows what this actually is. You can see the date on it was December 17, 1963. This is an attraction that actually came out in 1958 but they didn't file the patent until 1963, and it was Kevin Bacon that actually did that. Um, I just noticed something in the chat room that's up there. How many times has Howie been to Disney World or Disneyland? 122. Yeah, I'm sick. <laughs> but I learned so much because I'm writing books, and I do. Uh, that's actually not Magic Mountain, but it's the Matterhorn. And... Um, Kevin Bacon was the one that actually did that, and really interesting story behind that uh, to see what it was and the way that you could use that in the classroom. And there are two more slides here that are links about patents that you could use to pull each one of those pieces up and put all those things together. This one I looked at and I went, that is really strange, and it's called gaze tracking. And gaze tracking is a way that Disney has designed a way as you are walking through the parks and it can look at your eyes and the way that they are looking and they will, they're practicing this right now and just doing some tests with it that an audio animatronic which is a mannequin that is electronically activated so it looks like a real person and if you've been to Disneyland or Disney World you know what audio animatronics are and they can determine where they're looking. Now, there's some interesting information in saying how they're going to use this. Nobody really knows right now, but I thought that's the most unique one. That was filed about six months ago. The one on the right that you see, there are now drones that they do shows. There was one, uh, we were down there and uh, for Christmas, and we saw uh, drones forming different things up in the sky, like a Christmas tree, and then several different uh, illusions that are up there as these drones fly around. It's pretty amazing to see how that was done. So this next one is kind of extra that I threw in here, and it's something that I travel to different school districts, and we spend a day with teachers, administrators, any number of educational uh, personnel, and we do something called Imaginary Education, Dreaming Up Easy Inspired PBL and STEM Lessons. And what you have to do in the time period is you become an Imagineer for the day. These are the building blocks that we go through, and you have to, as your team, you have about 10 people on your team, and we divide them up, so if we had 80, we'd have eight teams, and these are the steps that we actually go through in the workshop of how all of these pieces come together. We follow the exact same process that Disney does as Imagineers. We organize a team and put them together. You have to uh, kind of sell your skills. 
Blue sky is the dreamy process. What's the story behind your attraction? What about the research? What kind of materials are available? We design it. You draw it with uh, uh, tools such as Google Draw or Tinkercad. There's a number of different ways to do that. You have to test it. Uh, you have to put the engineering, the auto animatronics, the sound effects, the summative assessment that's involved, and then the most important thing is a five-minute presentation to some Imagineers. We have them usually come in by video so that you can do that. We have a contest and give prizes at the end because Walt was really big on the pitch that was done. And this is a really important process that we feel is important for students that they learn how to do that, that they can do a pitch and stand up in front of a group. Probably uh, the, the most fun activity that you can have, if you're interested, send me an email. I'd love to come to your school, your district, uh, to actually spend the day with you and do this. And what you can do as we go through, here's one that we had, we did in Kansas City recently with 80 different uh, administrators that were together on it. And they just had a blast. And what the best part for me was at the end of it is how many superintendents came up and said, I now understand project-based learning. I now understand what inquiry-based learning and STEM is all about. I understand how it works. And that just made me feel great that they really got to participate and be able to do that. So this is the way you form your team. You fill this out. You answer the questions. You make a poster board that you hang around your neck. And then we pick four leaders, and they come around and hire you. They interview you. So you have your team members together. There's 10 or 11 on here. These are the members that actually come together. And what happens then is we have that team together. They have to come up with the idea. I'm going to do this attraction, and where it's a new attraction, and we're going to be at this park in this land. So maybe it's a new attraction that's going to be an adventure land, or it's going to be a fantasy land, whatever that particular piece happens to be in. Um, you have to do a little pitch to your group and say, this is what it's going to be. What's the story? What's behind it? What's the theme? What's the cue? How do all those pieces go together? Then we take three by five cards and we put the story together. We put them on boards and we can tell the story behind it. Your team is all working together. Those people that had those skills are the ones that actually can help do those particular pieces. So we then go through this whole process where we design it. We use mind mapping like Bubble Us and pull that particular piece up. We do the research about it. Uh, you have to have somebody in your group that's really an expert on researching, finding out what location you're going to put it in, as I said, the park, uh, building a model. Now, when you actually do this with the students, and we've had over 100 schools that do this, they actually take and do this as a full project where they build an actual scale model. But if you don't have time to do that, you can do the drawing piece. And this is the engineering part that comes in. Here's from uh, the workshop we did recently, and uh, some of the teachers that were actually putting the different pieces together. They have a park map in front of them trying to figure out what park it's going to go into of the four parks at Disney World, and then also what land will it be in. And we offer checklists and so on and, and activities for them to go through that. Google Draw or Tinkercad are two projects, programs that you can actually do. Um, then here's some drawings that some of the students, classes, teachers, and administrators. And I said it before, but I'm going to say it again. I love working with administrators and curriculum directors because they really see what it's like in the classroom to take a real world project, how to take project-based learning or inquiry-based learning and put it together and solve a series of problems, putting it together. So here's the segment from the Imagineering Classrooms workshop. And this is something that was filed about two years ago. And it was filed by Disney, I'm sorry, I'll take uh, six years ago, 2010 it was filed. And you can get that information, but this is a flying, excuse me, vehicle with a parachute. And you can't see it on there, but there's actually a way to propel this that it actually flies. This concept drawing is on a dragon. Now it's going to be interesting to see if anything like this shows up in the Avatar Land, which will be open May of this year and to see if this actually shows up with the dragon or something along the avatar uh, concept ideas and things. And then the final presentation here where they had to make some models and things in here. Notice the stress on this individual <laughs> that's back here. This teacher was having a stressful moment because it's very time-based. And I drive them crazy because I'll say, you have 14 minutes left. 
get ready for your presentation. You have five minutes left, and they do this five-minute presentation at the end to convince the Imagineers that theirs is the best. And here they are getting ready and doing the practice for it, all part of the workshop that they do. A lot of anxiety, but everybody at the end says how much fun it was and what they learned. And that final pitch is that five-minute presentation to uh, sell that particular project. If you would like, um, I have a 200, it's, this started out as a 18 page booklet and after five years it is now up to 289 pages. It is everything from step by step. Um, I give back to educators and I've had a great career in the uh, classroom and also, excuse me, as a business owner and as a CIO in Durango, Colorado and this is my gift back to everybody and uh, you can download that book at, uh, you can go to my Disney class. Uh, if you want to, or just follow. The easiest way is to follow my Disney class on Twitter, and uh, I will send you the link of where to do that. If you can't remember all of that, of all of these links, just send an email to howie at frontier.net, and I will send you uh, the information on how to get the free download. So this is a whole lot of fun, and it has to do with Disney characters who taught us life lessons. And uh, Autumn. I just really appreciate what she has done here of how she has taken the movies and the lesson behind it. And I'm going to do two different takes on this. One would be the characters that taught us life lessons. And this is the direct link on here that you can get it. And it talks about the character development that are in the movies and how they weave these lessons in. Uh, Moana, I just came back from seeing two weeks ago, what a fantastic movie about the Polynesian culture and the story that they have to tell. And there's so many things like that that are in the movies, but there's a lot of other things that you can do. So here's some that I think are some fun ones. Flynn that said in Tangled, don't be afraid to let people know the real you. You don't have to pretend to be someone else to succeed. Be proud of who you are. And Belle and Beauty and the Beast. Books can take you to all kinds of places, but don't get so lost in them you miss the real world. And Wreck-It Ralph. Don't believe people who tell you there's something wrong with you. Being different doesn't mean you're wrong. Now here's a couple of interesting ones. Peter Pan, you can accomplish amazing things by thinking positively, but if a boy shows up at your window in the middle of the night, he's probably going to get you into trouble. <laughs> I really enjoyed what she said on that. Tinkerbell, you can be small and powerful. One does not prevent the other. Next one is how design, how Disney brings design thinking into the classroom. This is a really unique project. I think it's probably more middle school and high school. So what we need to do as we go through this, and I can only just show you a few things, but there's details in the slides when you download the things off to drhowie.com. Uh, design thinking, I think everybody knows really what that is, but how we come up with solutions in the classroom for a project. So what I'm going to show you is what a teacher did um, and how they use this method to put together the teamwork, the collaboration, the creativity piece. And it's very, very different. And it's themed after Disney movies. So here's the first one. Uh, and there are, there are three of them that are I'm just going to show you a couple. So the, everybody knows the story that the clock stuck, struck midnight in Cinderella. She left. But she left back behind one of the glass slippers. So here's the twist. They don't have enough time to go door to door. You need to brainstorm and figure out another way to find who this glass slipper belonged to. Second one, Simba's campaign. If you're not familiar with The Lion King, basically there was a very bad character in here called Scar. And this talks about Simba, who is going to be the, the father is killed. Um, and Simba has taken over kind of the, the area that, um, the, that is in this um, movie. And one of the things that you need to do is you have an hour to get and figure out how to get Scar to uh, stand up for what he did wrong, but also craft a way that uh, the pride, the pride is all of the lions and all the animals, to select you as their leader to select Simba as the leader and overthrow Scar. And they have to brainstorm and come up with that. 
So they're taking a movie and coming up with a design thinking piece. So this particular lesson that the uh, teacher has done, you can download on there. The link is on there, and Peggy's uh, gratefully provided that for us in there. Uh, Project-based learning <laughs> using movies. Sarah gave this one to me. And I thought it would be interesting to go through and share this with you. She was going on Pinterest and looking at some different things. But what she said is, how about we take the movies and see how accurate they are? And it's a known fact that Walt Disney came up with a lot of old fairy tales and were grim fairy tales and other writings and made a movie out of it but they modified it a lot. So her take was, let's come up with inaccuracies in the Disney films. So let's go back and look at the original fairy tale. What was it? Where did it come from? What was the time period? Did Disney stay true to that, or did they modify it? And most of they do modify it. Then where is the setting and the time and the place? Where did it take place? Was it in China? Was it, excuse me, in Polynesia? Uh, how accurate are the appearance of the characters? In other words, if an, it's an Asian individual, do they portray that character correctly? And uh, what about Hercules and so on? Then one of the things that you can do also is the historical inaccuracies. Are there some? And if there are, tie some things together. And I've given you an example in here of Beauty and the Beast that takes, care, that takes place in the revolutionary time of France and there's some uh, examples that I gave in here. So there's a lot of different ways that you can take and do that and have a lot of fun with the movie. Now, obviously, they don't actually have to see the whole movie, but it would help. And uh, you can, uh, there's a number of ways that you could do that. In showing the movie, um, you have to do it in a couple class periods, or they could do that as an outside assignment and put it together. Science of Superheroes, uh, two takes off of on this that you can do. And one would be is, what is a superhero? And the way that this teacher did it is they put lots of books in there. They went on the web. They put paper up on the wall. They let the kids draw their superhero. What are the characteristics of that? Comparing that to in a comic book, to in a movie, to things that are on the web. Um, another one that you can do now is uh, by making a serial, excuse me, a superhero. And there's some apps that are available and craft projects where they can actually put the pieces together. Taking little super pegs and letting them design that with colored pieces or tape that's on some of these. How about making a coaster out of comic books, getting old comic books, cutting them up, asking for donations. Or you can go on Pinterest and find lots of things that are on there to be able to put those together also. Um, here are some, here's a link in Pinterest of all kinds of superhero crafts. This is probably aimed more at elementary school, but I have seen it done in middle school also and using some of those. The superhero project is where you get to make your own superhero. And Mark sent this to me, and with some printable classroom things that are available, you can put them back and you come up and say, okay, here's the superhero, here's the characteristics, and the students actually get to create this. Again, probably more elementary school, but I was surprised of an email that I got from a teacher that says, I used this in middle school and kids loved it. They got to create their own superhero and putting that together. Here's the one that uh, Michael did and put it together 10 years old. And this is, she likes to fight, she's strong. Uh, she lives in Beachwood, Ohio, in a secret place. Great imagination here for the kids. Analyzing the superheroes and the villains. I thought it was interesting on this that I would put something in here about superheroes and the supervillains. Why not talk about the villains? Usually it's all the superheroes. But what about the villains? Who are they? In fact, I'd be interested. I'll throw this out and see if anybody puts it in the chat. Who is the most hated villain in all of Disney movies. There is one, and there's actually a link in the 140 slides you can download of the 25 top villains, and there's only one that's the most hated villain of all. But what you can do is talk about what is the difference between real world and heroes and villains and the violence and action that goes with it. I think it's a great discussion to have with kids about the power that it's given to those characters. Um, the link that is in here is how you can use the myth-building techniques of television that's on there that you can see, and also 
the heroes that are available on TV and a number of things with the Marvel movies that uh, Disney bought Marvel for $2 billion and everybody said they were crazy. They got that back in the first year and the Marvel movies and then they turned around and bought Star Wars. So the same thing is happening there if you're a Star Wars fan. Um, okay, I just saw it. Scar was the number one villain. Somebody, Mary Carter just put it up there. Scar is the most hated villain of all because of what he did. And here's the link of all of the Disney villain characters, as I mentioned. And then uh, just a couple more here, and then we'll wrap up and open it up for questions. Using music to actually improve reading and inspire writing. And there's a couple things you can do here. I do this as a project, another workshop that I do um, that's on storytelling and where we take the music lyrics of Disney songs and we do storytelling and put a video together with it. And you can take and look these lyrics and things up. And what we do is a sheet that the, the uh, teachers have put together here and they listen to the song and they write down what I hear, what I think, and what I wonder the curiosity piece, which is part of the seven C's. Uh, I'm going to be at FETC next week. Um, I'm going to be doing three workshops there, one on this Disney project, but another one on the seven C's, and curiosity is one of those. So uh, that's the way that we put the pieces together, and then we put print up the lyrics. It can be electronically or hard paper, and then the students put notes and things together on that, and what they're looking for is still images that they will put together and you can use any number of programs that are out there for slides, so PowerPoint and so on, and you match the words to the music. One of those that I've done, and if you want to see this, uh, it's on my YouTube channel, it's called Fly With Me, and I took pictures of my grandkids of a recent uh, Disney World trip. And I've highlighted some of the words that we went through and said, well, let's look for this, let's look for this, and let's see what these particular ones say. Two more. And then we'll turn it back for questions. Uh, the myth here in Hercules, and talking about the hero's journey, uh, this is a takeoff that a teacher has done with the Game of Thrones on the hero's journey. And I thought, what a great way to take an HBO series, again, depending on age, age appropriate here, if they're watching that, but there's a whole, you can watch a lot of those now on uh, Amazon Prime and some of the other, Hulu and some of the others, you can put those together and take a look at the hero's journey in the Game of Thrones and looking at that. And all based upon Joseph Campbell's um, uh, paradigm that he put together to identify the stages of the hero's journey, those apply in the Game of Thrones and putting that together. And I put uh, a lot of links on here on mythology. So if you teach mythology, you can put any one of those in here and find these and take those links. And again, there's more in the larger download. And then the last one that I have on here it, uh, has to do with Star Wars in the classroom. Um, this has been around for a couple of years. And I recently did was in Indianapolis and did uh, some workshops for the ICE conference there. And I had. Uh, conversations with Thomas Riddle, who uh, takes and builds this site. And uh, the, the two of them, uh, the, the links are down there for Thomas and Wes. And what amazing individuals these two are. And it's how to take all the Star Wars things. And I've just listed some of these things in here. It is so extensive. If you want to do writing, if you want to do video, if you want to do character study, you can see all the things that are in here. They're all tied to these different subject areas that are listed in here. Um, the uh, social studies, robotics, the science, Luke Skywalker's hero's journey, how to take Joseph, Joseph Campbell's journey and apply that on there. So it is absolutely amazing the things that are in there. And the project they have going on right now is with the uh, new Rogue One movie where you can actually uh, take a camera, put a movie, and they have a contest together where they're giving some really great prizes available for that. Uh, another one that uh, Thomas just put up recently about how Bill Gates talks about using Star Wars and tying it to civil rights. And I haven't actually had a chance to look at it. I looked at the article real quick and it sounds really interesting, but to have somebody like Bill Gates actually support that and put that piece in there. And then the writing resources that you can put in there. Of, uh, he has a whole creative writing section that he, that uh, Thomas and, and Wes have put together on that and putting all the pieces together. And here's one that was done in the hero, hero's journey of Ray 
in the Star Wars movie that came out uh, a year ago in December, having that one available. And here's the one on the hero's journey for Luke Skywalker. Um, these are just a length of some of the things. Uh, he's, they change this every month and adding new things onto it. So fantastic resource that Tama has that's on there. Finishing up, um, a lot of people ask me about uh, they'd like to read a blog. And so what I've done is put a couple things that are in here. And 13 must-read Disney World blogs that have to do everything. And I've tried to gear these towards the classroom. And then there's uh, Disney, some Disney bloggers. I write for WDW Fan Zone. I do a monthly publish. And I usually tie that in mind to the education piece um, for Stuart that's on there. Podcasts, as I mentioned at the beginning, we'd be happy to have uh, you listen to Ryan and I as we, every two times a month, talk about how to use Disney in the classroom, how to incorporate ideas of imagineering, problem solving, critical thinking, the seven C's, how do you put those together. It's available on Libsyn. You can download the issues or you can uh, say you can subscribe on there and you'll get them sent automatically to you. And as I mentioned, the free PDF book that is available. You can take and follow at my Disney class on Twitter, and I will get a notification. I will send you where that link is to be able to do that. Or you can just send an email to howieatfrontier.net, and I will give that information to you on how to do it. And a reminder, lastly, is the PD Magic online graduate class, three credit hours, professional development credit. You'll get a certification for that from Buena Vista University. Um, it is about a third of the cost. And that class will be in May. There is only room. It's an online class, but we don't have room for 15. If you're interested, go to mydisneyclass.com. There's a button there to click on to tell you exactly what to do. Or send an email to howie at frontier.net, and I will send you the information. So with that, there are the links. I will, I'm not sure who I'm turning it back to, to Paula or whoever I'm turning it back to. Thanks so much, Howie. I did manage to capture uh, a question in chat. Uh, curious about the copyright issue on the crafting website. That is, Chip and Dale and Donald Duck nephews on crafts. Wouldn't that be copyright infringement? Or is Disney relaxing on that as long as it's educationally based? Yeah. They they really have in the last two years. Uh, to answer your question, mm -hmm. technically, yes. But their feeling now is there is such a huge Disney community of people that are using it. Now, if you took that and you were selling it, now you've stepped over the line and sure. you will hear. But if it's a craft that's being used in a classroom or for kids or homeschool, they seem to be stepping back. I mean, I, I, had, I personally had a thing about 10 years ago where I actually did something at a conference and had Mickey Mouse. I was working for Classroom Connect at the time. And uh, I had Mickey Mouse up there. And I was doing the presentation at mm -hmm. Disneyland. And an attorney walked up after I was doing the presentation as a practice. Mm -hmm. An attorney walked up and said, you will take Mickey Mouse off of all your slides. <laughs> but in the last couple of years, as long as you're not selling it, mm -hmm. making money off of it, it seemed to have really stepped back and not, uh, not uh, enforce that as much anymore. OK. Uh, Paula just asked, what can you share about Ed Camp magic? Uh, I would tell you what, what it is briefly. Uh, I've been involved the first two years. I've had to step back this year because um, I, I have so much involvement in this book that we're doing. Uh, it is held in Orlando every year. And uh, Paula's been there. And uh, it is a ed camp. But it's themed around uh, creativity, innovation, and uh, imagineering. And uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it's ended up shifting a little bit more towards a local conference, but there's still a number of people that do come from out of town. But it's held in Orlando. Uh, it's held near Disney World. And there's different activities. And if you've been to an ed camp, you know exactly what it's like. But a lot of the themes and things that are there have to do with creativity, STEM, problem solving, uh, and so on. So I'm not uh, involved in that much of it this year. But uh, you can go to edcampmagic.com and they get information on it. And it's, uh, it's uh, uh, held. Uh, this will be the third year that it will be done. So they can get information on there. Mm -hmm. That's great. Those were the questions that I found. Uh, thanks so much.
for for presenting today. I think everybody learned a lot and a lot that they didn't. Oh, here's another question from Peggy. Uh, what's the best online site for kids, elementary, middle school, high school, to go to if they want to do some Disney projects independently? Wow. There are so <laughs> many of them. And th th that's actually what happened a year ago as mm -hmm. teachers said, how do I find sites? And that's how mm -hmm. this particular presentation came about. Um, I don't have one in particular, uh, you know, t to share. And I, I guess the best way I can answer the question is uh, just keep checking back on my Disney class. What we mm -hmm. do is gather information from teachers on there, and the tabs across the top will give you different things. Like right now, there's 52 resources that are listed on there, and there are websites mm -hmm. and things you can do. We post things on Twitter. Uh, at my Disney class, those two I could say because they could find very easily by following on Twitter at my Disney class. We do that daily. We do four or five a day, um, and then by going to the my Disney class mm -hmm. website, there are all the tabs that go across there that have, and that way we gather those resources. That's great. That's great. So there is a place where teachers can go to to find some things pretty quickly. Wonderful. And again, thanks so yeah, much. And that's, for okay. Thank you very much. I really appreciate the time. And uh, if anybody has any information that they need, send me an email at howie at frontier.net. And I will turn the show over to Peggy, who will talk about what's coming up next. That was incredible, Howie. Thank you so much. I know everyone's going to enjoy spending the time actually digging into all of those resources that you shared with us. Well, we have a show every Saturday, almost every Saturday. But as you can see, we have some surprises coming up because all those to be decided are things that are in the works but not finalized yet. We will have a show next Saturday and we'll post it as soon as um, it is confirmed. But we won't have a show on January 28th because lots of us like to go to Educon um, um, 2017, which is hosted in Philly but it's also all virtual. So if you don't live anywhere near there, you can participate in it in the virtual session. So be sure to check that out. And then February shows are still being worked out. So come back and join us whenever you can. And we will publish them all so you can watch the recording if you can't make it on a Saturday. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. This slide talks about the EduCon conference in Philly, the Learning Revolution Project. This is Steve Hargadon's latest. He's gathered all his resources in one place, including hosting your own webinar. You get to sign up for a Collaborate classroom, and as long as your session is public, it's free. You can nominate a featured teacher at this site or fill out the form that's in the live binder. You can nominate yourself as a featured teacher for the month as well. The video collection is at this iTunes U address. As you exit the session, you can take the survey that pops up in your browser or take this link or the link that will be in chat. The link's also in the live binder. When you do that, at the bottom, you can request a professional development certificate. and Make sure you have this sent to a personal email address because otherwise it may not get to you. Schools tend to block this from getting to you. Uh, it will print out your name and you get these thanks to Patty Ruffing. Special thanks again to our special guests, Dr. Howie, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform and to everyone who participated in the show today. Thank you so much for coming.